I want to thank everybody for uh, showing up today. I want to thank Joel and Hillary for opening up their house to us. We really appreciate and for all of you for showing up. Uh, my name is Joe Longoria. I am the Mojave County Democratic Central Committee Chairman. Um, and uh, to get things started, uh, we're going to, before dinner, uh, we are going to whet your appetites with some of our campaign um, uh, in information. Uh, so to start it off, to start it off, uh, let's uh, recite the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, right behind you, Joe. Uh, right here. Those look like flags. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And in honor of Dave Hamilton, remember the veterans. Okay. All right. To get things started, uh, I'm go I'd like to introduce uh, one of the candidates running for the Arizona State Legislature to represent the citizens of La Paz and Mojave County. And um, she has run before. She is, uh, uh, I lean on her experience a lot in uh, what I am doing. And, uh, and I appreciate uh, her very much. Uh, she is a former educator and uh, currently uh, running a couple of businesses. Uh, uh, trying to make e ends meet while her husband runs for U.S. Congress. Uh, so without uh, any more delay, uh, Beth Weiser. Yeah. Thank you, Joe, very much. So an introduction. My name is Beth Weiser, and I'm running for Arizona House and Legislative District 5. That is Mojave County and La Paz County. This is a very difficult race, as we all know. Uh, Mojave County especially has not been a Democratic County as far as a Democratic Party majority for over 30 years. But I really, really am at the point where I see our Democratic Party changing. We're understanding the threats that we're facing out there and we're starting to step up. And that's going to be critical for all of us and our survival. We're talking our health care, we're talking our education, we're talking our ability to even survive. Minimum wage has to go up. Our cost of living is not going to go down. I am wearing a shirt that's a part of my business that I work with. I just was at a convention. We were on the road and running like normal. But you notice what the theme was this year was all in. And that's where I think we're going, and I can feel it coming. Our Democrats in our county are coming all in because we know that it takes one person plus another person plus another person. And as we do that, we gain strength, we gain a voice, and we will be able to tell everybody else, hey, I'm a Democrat. Hey, hey. Yeah. I know. I stand for things that we all need. Yeah. I know that we can bring some pragmatism and some practicality to our state so that everybody can survive again. I'm Beth Weiser. I'm running for Arizona House for Legislative District 5, and I re represent you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I would like to introduce somebody that I have been impressed more and more every time I talk to him. This man stepped up when he says, oh, you want me to do what? Okay, just tell me where to go and I'll do it. He has got the backbone of the Democrats in Mojave County. Our current chair for the Mojave County Central Committee, Joe Longoria, is also running for the Arizona House. He is going to kill it. I love this guy. I'd like him to come on and you guys listen to him for a while. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Joe. Go, go. I hope I can live up to your expectations. My name is Joe Longoria, and I am running for uh, Arizona State House of Representatives to represent the citizens of Mojave and La Paz counties. And before I get into why I'm running, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. 
I have been married for 37 years to my lovely wife, Michelle. Uh, we have raised three children. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my middle son was uh, killed in an auto accident in 2000. And, um, and the positive thing is uh, we loved him very much. And uh, he was making something of himself. And we do believe uh, that he is uh, uh, in a better place looking down on me now uh, with, uh, with proudness that his father is stepping up to represent the people of Mojave County. Uh, since then, my uh, oldest son and my youngest daughter, my daughter, they have uh, given us uh, eight grandchildren, four boys and four girls, uh, who we miss very much. They live in the state of Washington. I did graduate at Kingman High School in 1972, and I lettered in track, and I'll get to that in a second. And um, I went to Yavapai College and uh, graduated there with an AA degree. And then I, went, I came back to Kingman uh, to work where I met my wife. And I started getting involved locally. Uh, at college, I was elected the student body business manager. It was the first time that they had that position open. I ran and successfully won. Uh, the first election I ever won. <laughs> The first time I ever ran, I was a freshman in high school for president. I did not do too well. <laughs> I thought just popularity would do it, but uh, you had to actually work. And I'm learning about that work now. But after uh, becoming uh, the student body uh, business manager at Yavapai, then uh, that was the beginning of me winning elections. Uh, since then, I have been elected a treasurer of the uh, Full Gospel Businessmen, um, uh, elected to a church board. Uh, in 1980s and most recently I have uh, been elected as your chairman of the county party so quite frankly I'm gonna roll <laughs> and Beth mentioned that it's very difficult uh, what we are trying to do trying to represent the people of Mojave County uh, quite frankly because they don't have a voice uh, I am a Democrat because I believe that uh, the Americans uh, that have a voice don't have a voice. That's the mothers, the fathers, uh, students, uh, nurses, teachers, police officers, uh, the elderly, uh, the working class, the poor, the sick, and the needy. They don't have a voice. Um, and, and I feel that the current representation that we do have in the county are more interested in slamming Obamacare and promoting people like Cliven Bundy in Nevada than they are about the people uh, that actually they represent. And that is a promise that I can make to you. When I get down to the legislature, I'm gonna work on policies that bring jobs to Arizona, bring jobs to Mojave County specifically. And the only way to do that is to support a platform of jobs, opportunity, and education. Education is at the bottom of what I say, but that actually the foundation to getting an opportunity to get a good job. And in running, I am hoping that you can catch the vision that I'm trying to impart on you. Uh, and jobs, opportunity, and education are only going to be positive in Mojave County if we get to work and elect a Fred Duval as governor, Felicia Rodolini as attorney general, Terry Goddard as secretary of state. And even if they do win, they're not going to be getting, able to get a lot of things done if they don't have a legislature that's going to help them uh, get policies uh, 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 passed that will help us up here. Uh, let me give you a quote uh, about women empowerment. If I can find it here. What we have seen here in Mojave County uh, is a an attitude that I have found, and I don't see it in any of you people here. But this is the attitude that I've seen. Basically, it is a, a quote from Winston Churchill that says, the pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, and an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. So as your chairman, I have been trying to impart to you that we can win. It is possible for a David to beat a Goliath. But in order to do that, it requires a lot of work. We have a lot of hurdles to overcome. And I did mention to you that I was a 
uh, I, I lettered in track in high school, and I lettered in hurdles. <laughs> so I am not afraid to jump over obstacles and hurdles to get the things that we need to get done. I think I've been prepared for this. Uh, uh, even the barrel agrees with me. Thank you. So in order for us to get things done, we have to get elected. And the only way for us to get elected is for each every one of you to do what Beth said. You vote for us. You get a friend to vote for us, and they get a friend to vote for us. But the only way that you're going to be able to vote for us is if you believe in what we're doing. So if you do believe what we're doing, I'm asking for your vote, and I'm asking for your support to do the legwork that it takes uh, to go out and get the votes necessary. And I, I'm, I'm encouraged that we're having these, these house parties. This is the grassroots effort that we need to do. And I'm also pleased to know that at some of these house parties, we actually have some Republicans that are going to be showing up. And that is the key to our victory. There is a lot of negative, uh, at least things that Democrats feel are negative. Uh, as a Democrat, I do believe that every American should be able to participate in the national uh, treasure, the national wealth, the national economies. And we don't have that opportunity for everybody. And that is what I will do for you is I will make sure that those people that don't have a voice, they do have a voice. So thank you very much. I appreciate your vote. Thank you very much. Now what I would like to do, it's a, it gives me great pleasure to inter introduce the next speaker, someone who has been an inspiration to me, uh, someone who has supported me with, with, uh, in every single way, and somebody who I believe in that uh, will get the job done. He is going to be uh, the voice of opposition to the Republican uh, uh, totalitarianism, I guess I, is, is a good word. And uh, uh, you know him. Uh, he is the man uh, who uh, delivered your little pink name tags <laughs> and uh, has, has uh, labeled us the left coast uh, of Arizona. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our next representative for U.S. Congress from CD4, Michael Weiser. Yeah. Wow, thanks. This is really exciting to be able to do this, especially with the microphone. I feel almost like I've got it. Uh, 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 pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. Uh, it's true. My name is Michael Weiser. Many of you already know who I am. But I'll give you a, a brief overview. I'm a native Texan. That explains the oversized personality. Um, <laughs> Never did change my hat, so we're going to have to go like this. Uh, native Texas. Lived in Ma uh, Illinois for a year. Lived in, or try one more time. Lived in Massachusetts for a year, where I parked my car in Harvard Yard. Uh, lived in Illinois for 15 years. I should prepare you guys. That was correct reaction, Pete. Uh, I did about 20 years of writing political commentary. So if I say something and you think, wow, that sounds kind of weird. I wonder if you thought that was supposed to be funny. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, moved to Arizona uh, to be a school teacher after going back to college at 30. I spent my uh, 20s as a plumber, still dressed that way. So, uh, if you see me and you're thinking, wow, how come he's not in a suit and a tie? Well, folks, I did not come here to dress up. I came here to get some work done. We can have those other guys playing dress up. We got to get some work done. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. When I went to college at 30, I majored in um, English, ended up with a master's degree from the University of Illinois at Springfield, where I did work on literary criticism and allusion, which sounds really important at the time. <laughs> now, now I, I understand that it just taught me how to, that I could take on a big project and get stuff done, and, and that's what college is. I mean, we talk about education. I'm definitely somebody whose life was turned around with education. Because the only thing I ever had that was guaranteed before I went to school was that I knew how to work a shovel. You know, other than that, who knows? I, so taking me back to college at 30 changed my life so profoundly. And at 40, it caused me to move out to Arizona. I taught uh, social studies, accelerated reading, gifted and talented, a little bit of science down in Bullhead City. Bullhead City represent, for those of you who don't know, folks out in the TV land, Bullhead City's over there. Can we get a big yeah for Bullhead City? For anybody who comes to Bullhead City from the rest of Arizona, you come over Union Pass, and folks out there in TV land, you gotta see this. 
You come over Union Pass right at mile 12 on Highway 68, and there's this finger going, that way. <laughs> go west. Be brave. Be big. Go see what you can do out there. When I moved here on January 1st, 2001, I came over Union Pass, and there was Bullhead City. It's like, it's like a gem in the river, right? You noticed? Yeah. What can we do with that? I've been inspired ever since I got here. I've been a, a political writer, besides my, my day job, and a poet and an entertainer, an arts activist back in Illinois. Eventually, I decided to take up that sort of thing here. I have various books. There's one of these here on the table from when I first moved to Arizona because there was nobody teaching poetry down in Bullhead City. So I started a poetry class. Then I kept a poetry show going for teenagers for about five years, really till I had to become political to this level. I was a happy artist, but you guys all know what the mess in society is, right? Yeah. Right, and, yeah. right. and in this state, yeah. we know where to point to. Because who's been in charge of the state for at least as long as I can remember? Yeah. Not you guys, the Republicans. Did I hear somebody say that? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. When you make your campaign out of afflicting the sick and taking money from school kids, that's pretty repugnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd like you to come up here, at least those of you who are brave enough to be on camera. I want to show you something here on the table that we put up as a display. Come on. At least, at least one person show up so we can do like it's a, he's the character actor in the, in the video there. Oh, look, it's Juanita. Everybody give Juanita a big hand. Juanita, I want to give you a quick tour of the Congressional District. It runs Yuma to Utah, Parker to Payson. Uh, it's the uh, entire Colorado River area. It's uh, Central Highlands, Prescott over to Payson, and also all the rural area around Phoenix. In fact, the joke is it's everywhere in Maricopa where the people aren't. <laughs> yeah. It involves nine different legislative districts. And just like Joe and Beth, who I really love so much. In fact, I love that candidate so much, I'd get married to her. Oops, I already did, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's other people like Joe, like Beth, and like myself who are beginning candidates. The reason that, that our opponent, Paul Gosar, moved to this area, they call it uh, district top, carpet bag, is because there was no Democratic elected officials at any level of prominence and this entire seven county, nine legislative district area. Gerrymandered much? Yeah, gerrymandered much, yeah. So we needed somebody who was willing to take on something more than just their personal uh, self-advancement, more than just their own campaign. We need somebody who was willing to take this on as a serious project that would take a couple of years. When Beth and I first talked about whether or not I could do this, whether or not I should do this, I agreed to commit to a three-cycle circle. Yeah, thank you. A three-cycle circle. Uh, we started in 12, this is 14, and I expect to have really powerful performance by 16 because we're doing what it takes to make real politics work. Instead of putting a, out a few ads at the end of the cycle and hoping that people get impressed by that, you guys showed up here. They ran for office. People are starting their own campaigns all over the congressional district, all over the legislative district. At, at this place, LD5, we have people who are starting to get excited about there's something going on. There's some Democrats doing something for a change. We're sick of being like the silent voice. It's, it's OK to come up with your cynicism as a way to, to be cool, to be accepting of your loss. But I'd much rather win. My suffering may be beautiful, but I'd much rather triumph. How about you guys? Yeah. 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 I mean, what we're facing with our opponents is definitely not triumph. If you, I mean, if you're gonna afflict the sick and rob from the poor and make school children ignorant, you're gonna make Americans fearful not only of each other but of their country and all the other people in the world. So we're staying in our houses and don't disrupt. That's the future that sounds like George Orwell's 1984. I don't believe that that's what America should have. I don't think that's what we have to have, or, or it's certainly not what the rest of America seems to be interested in. And you guys watch culture, right? You see TV, listen to music, the videos, the movies. We know that Rush Limbaugh is not the current face of America. We know that Glenn Beck is not the taste of the American public. 
And, and Sean Hannity's not going to be the future. Bill O'Reilly's about done. They're going to wear out their welcome just as they burn their brand with all this shameful behavior. Tell people that you uh, care about them and then take away or vote to take away their health care 45 times? Give me a break. Tell people that you want to support everybody and then refuse to protect women against domestic violence? It's a lie. It's a lie. That's what they've done in, the, in their process is they'll wave the flag. See, I got flags. By the way, these came from the DNC. Thanks, Beth, for taking me along. It's great to be armed candy kids. They'll wave their flag, they'll talk about their mom, they'll talk about the dirt underneath them as if it's theirs, they'll talk about Jesus as if they created him and they got the trademark on him as a way to keep you from feeling like you're a full-fledged citizen. I came to Bullhead City, like I said, to be a teacher when I got out here. 90% poverty in my school, 65% Hispanic, large sections of people who didn't even know how to speak English. But they were here in our country, and we had to teach them. We had to figure out a way to work for them. And that's what I think that we need to have as our basis for, for taking on these Republicans. Take on the challenge at the level of, of our citizenry. We are, in fact, the oppressed. If you look at the, at the percentages, Democrats, we're outnumbered at least four to one, right? That's right. At least. And how do we get treated? I see bumper stickers that call us terrorists, that say it's okay to shoot us. That feels oppressed to me. How about people in the rural parts of the state? Look, you don't even have pavement. People out where we live have to haul water. There's roads that you can see on Google Maps, but you can't see them in person. And, and we pay the same taxes. We're still treated as Americans. These are some of the battles that I wanted to take on. Now, I don't want to just rattle, 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 though obviously I'm doing a good job with that. <laughs> First thing I want to do is, is to acknowledge that once that wonderful lady there had faith in me and I started my campaign, you guys started your own campaign and eventually we caught the attention of other candidates around the state. Now, when I asked people to come over, it wasn't just to be a prop. I appreciate that. I wanted to take you on a tour of, of my congressional district. We're here on what I call the left coast along the Colorado River. LD5 is Mojave County and La Paz County. All of La Paz County, most of Mojave, except where the Indian reservations are. Here we have Beth Weiser in her third run for a state level office. Joe Longoria showing what it really takes to be a leader of people. When he couldn't find a candidate, he made sure there was a candidate. Let's have a big hand for Joe. Yeah. Moving to the, to the east over in Yavapai County, LD1, they could, the strongest rural Democratic Party in, in the state, but met by a really vicious, belligerent Tea Party community, they could round up one candidate. So you guys are ahead of them. But Frank Kachia, a former uh, gym coach and math teacher, moved here from uh, Cleveland. Go Kucinich. Uh, yeah. He's, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you out there. I appreciate the reference. He's taken on the battle, though this is his first time in, in politics. He just knew it was time to stand up. Over in LD6, uh, that includes the area of Flagstaff, not that that's part of my congressional district, but, but LD6 includes Flagstaff. We, we have pieces in Cottonwood and Payson. A uh, professor from NAU, Lanny Morrison, taking on the battle out there. Wind blowing around my pages. Last week on Wednesday, much to my surprise, in LD8, which is a large rural mountainous area, mostly Pinal County, the sitting senator, Barbara McGuire, asked me if I would help her with part of her county because, because we're mobilizing people at other places. So she had heard that something was going on. In LD12, uh, another first time candidate, DJ Rothans, a guy who had been a union pipe fitter. Knew something had to be done. Matt Sarah, who's a computer technician, uh, is running for the state senate there. I'm working with both those guys. Out in LD13, it's from Litchfield Park all the way out to the Colorado River at Yuma. 
Uh, that's uh, Terry Wood Mancy. Her husband, John, had run for uh, sheriff in Maricopa County last year. LD16, which is Apache Junction in Mesa. Scott and Kara Pryor, another husband and wife team. See the need for the challenge and willing to take it on. Speaking of husband and wife teams, I, I'd like to give a hand to the husband and wife team that run the local Democratic group here. Pete and Carol Vordanoff. I know a little bit about how beautiful it is to work as, with your spouse at uh, saving the world. <laughs> and then, uh, just recently, another former teacher in LD22, that's uh, Surprise, Sun City West, that range, Pieces of Peoria, Whitman and Nottaberg, uh, Arky Moscato, asked me to start working with him. And when we ended up with this many different legislative candidates working with our campaign, takes it out to the politics of about two million people. Now, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Two yeah. years ago, when I said I was going to run, people thought that it was just a guy and a voice in the wilderness. And it was. I, mean, I, I had to learn what I was doing the same way the candidates are learning all over this great distance. But about two weeks ago, when we filed our FEC filing, we had some support from the state of Arizona's Democratic Party. They said, come in, let's have the big meeting. They asked me to look out for all these different people that I've been talking to you about. The brave first time candidates or beginning candidates or rural candidates ready to take on the, the red districts. They made sure that I got van access to my congressional district, 700,000 people. It's a $2,000 contribution to my campaign. Right. Which, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That shows you that they're willing to have something happen. They also line me up with a new fundraising strategy, and we're going to be trying that out over the next couple of weeks. You know we have to raise money to make a difference. In fact, I'm going to ask a lot of you for gas money. It took gas money to get here. It's going to have to take gas money to get away. But what they really wanted was somebody who was willing to put in the time and the energy to make a movement, to make a difference. I've talked to congressional campaign managers repeatedly, and they always talk about mobilize and the quick turnaround and how you can do things fast. But, but look at what happened with Obama. Obama may not have been the liberal that many of us thought, but he surely wasn't the, the commie that we heard from the Republicans. He surely wasn't the guy that should have provoked the backlash and the disgusting behavior we've seen for the last six years. That means that the culture wasn't ready for what he was bringing. We're having to go through that battle right now. You'd think it'd be obvious that women should get equal money. You'd think it'd be obvious that we should have thrown those bastards in jail that took our money and our houses on Wall Street. You think it should have been obvious we should have universal health care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But the culture wasn't ready for that. And until somebody was willing to look at making the big difference, Instead of just getting a quick vote, we weren't going to have anything really happen with any depth. Starting in January 13, I went to the executive uh, director of the Democratic Party, DJ Quinnell. I said, my man, I really enjoy being an artist and a writer, and my private life was fun. If you have a candidate that I can love and support, I'll put up the signs, I'll traipse all over the district, and I'll continue my life. But I need to have something done. I need to be sure that we have a fight. If you don't have a candidate, I'll bring all I've got. He said, I want you. And for the last two years, he's been working to make sure that I ended up in this position. Last night, 8.30 at night, I called him up on the, or, I'm sorry, called him up on the texting machine. You know what I mean? I need your help with the president of the teachers union. He's thinking that he likes my work. He wants to hear from you. And DJ was on the phone right there, because we want to make this happen. This is a three-year, a three-cycle plan. If I came in here flying in with all my pink duct tape and told you that I was going to win this election like that, you'd know either A, I was lying to you, or B, I was crazy, and that wouldn't help you in the long run. I really want this to change. So it didn't take one cycle to fall apart. It might take more than one cycle to build together. But when you take all those different candidates that I was talking about 
and their particular mobilization power, when you take the six different statewide candidates that I'm working directly for, to working directly with, and their power, Arizona can really change from, from purple to blue, at least at the statewide level, and then watch what we're going to do in 16. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. And then watch what we can bring the state, the nation, when it comes to improving our country like you know it's supposed to be. I mean, I don't have to pick out any specific thing out of Paul Gosar's retinue to talk about the humiliation he's brought to our state. <laughs> right now, he's going through Bundygate. Yeah. I said... I can't imagine what it would be like to be in his position and hoping that this guy spouting all the BS he knew was lies wouldn't mess up the story for him and then and then there he is, a racist, hugging a racist. Out in, in LD22, we're laughing because they have a clown in LD22, David Livingston, that's about to get pilloried because they have the force already organized to, to bring down his record because of associating with Bundy. Gosar has given us a wonderful opportunity. I mentioned what he did with uh, women and domestic violence. Uh, I could talk about how he's wanted to take down the uh, protections of uranium mining at the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's not like anybody uses that water, right? Yeah, right. The copper pit. Right, the copper pit, resolution copper mine, which I tell you, to quote one of my heroes, Jefferson Smith, you scratch that thing, you'll find a rat in there. Look at that resolution copper mine. There's something dirty going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or, like one of my favorites, I went to his uh, hearing on the uh, downwinders, just to be sure that all the people out in TV land know. In the 1950s, they did hundreds of nuclear tests in the Nevada desert north of here when they realized that they were making people sick and die from uh, fallout from the nuclear radiation, they prepared a, uh, a plan to compensate and take care of the health care for some of the people, but not those in Mojave County, because our incidents were so high that they somehow lost our records. So Paul Gosar comes in a couple of weeks ago, waltzing in on righteous indignation, which is one of his major uh, themes. Anybody seen a Paul Gosar speech? Okay, tell me if this is about it. Uh, Benghazi, 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 IRS, Holder, IRS. Wait, Benghazi, Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious, Benghazi, IRS, IRS, Holder. That's it. Thank you. I rest my case. So this day, he's got three themes. He's got, oh, righteous indignation over the accountability of these poor people who have been wounded by, what is it? What do you call this? Pollution. By pollution. This is the guy who wants to gut the EPA, yeah. who says there should be no EPA. Then he goes, oh, the suffering and the misery. Look at my huge bleeding heart. All these people who have health problems, we should have no problem making sure that they get compensated, that their medical bills be taken care of, that we celebrate their sacrifice and their suffering. The same guy who has voted to cut the ACA 45 frickin' times. 45 times he's voted to let 30 million people die. 45 times he said, I'm a doctor, but I don't care about my patients. How deep is his actual care about the downwinders? That deep or that deep? Is it a political statement? I think so. I'm asking you guys to understand. Look at Paul Gosar's record. You're already on my side. I don't have to feed you this Kool-Aid. You can watch it on TV. You know what he's doing. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm hoping that you guys are working on. I want to get through a little section where I talk about some ideas that I'm asking for you here, the people in TV land. It has to do with starting your own campaign. When Beth met me, I was the kind of guy who would go out on a street corner with my little political sign and stand there for two hours and believe that I was changing the world. And you know what? I was. I was, and I am still. And that little act got me to this street corner where I am today. So when I talk about starting your own campaign, I'm not talking about jumping off a cliff like we have and taking out papers and collecting petition signatures. I'm talking about standing up for what you actually believe in. 
Yesterday at the AEA conference, uh, President Dennis Van Roekel talked about the inspiration that he takes from the civil rights movement, the power of our oppression. We know that our cause is just. We know that they have misused our country and our citizens and our treasure. And if we don't stop them, it's disaster. We know the country wants Arizona to come to its senses. Stop calling our brown people terrorists. Stop calling our poor lazy and stop calling our women men's property. If we all work on something, we can do something. I would like to help you as I've helped Joe and somebody commented, wow, you know that precinct name? That's because so far in Mojave County, I've cut 19 different precinct walk lists. And that's uh, out of the 30 that I've cut around the congressional district. This is where I live. Of course, you guys get my first attention. You get my best investment. I wish that I could spend as much time here as I'm spending on the whole thing. I believe that our cause is just. And until we have a movement, until the movement's really there and I can trust it, I'm going to have to, like, juggle everything throw out what I hope will happen and hope that I run into that when I get there. But it's happened so far. Look at Paul Gosar stepping on his reputation. Look at uh, David Livingston stepping on his reputation. Look at the weakness that the, uh, the Republicans are demonstrating at the national and at the state level. They're like bullies trying to make sure they get in one last sucker punch before the principal comes. Yeah. I may not be a principal, and I would extend a metaphor here, but I'm sick of bullies. And aren't you? Yeah. Aren't you sick of it? Yeah. I want you to take into this day. Today, this is your chance. It's the 27th. You make your own commitment to a, a, a campaign, whether it be personal, whether it be putting your effort into somebody else, doing something online, calling your friends and saying this is different. This isn't ordinary. It's not worth ignoring. This is extraordinary. We all make this extraordinary. We will give them the fight that they deserve, and they will be stopped. Right. They don't deserve this reputation. We need to take our country back. I hope you'll help me. And that's a really long speech. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do you have any questions before I hand this off? Well, here, I'm going to hand it off to Joe. And if you have questions, I'll be sitting over here. No, stay, stay up here. Okay. I, I would like to take just this, uh, this is little bit of your time to see if you guys do have any questions for Michael, myself, or Beth um, that are important to you. We'll give you an opportunity. Um, any questions? I have one. Yes, ma'am. Juanita. going to just say is that that has probably been created by them. Yes, it seems to be. And, yeah. and when you read on a bill, uh, any specific bill, you know, because I like to look up the, the actual, before I start forming an opinion, I read the bill. Mm -hmm. So it comes up on searches. Right. So I go to see, and I'm going, I can't believe 95% of the people don't want, yeah. no, you look at the numbers, 82 people voted and 79 said, you know, yeah. Right. It's a marketing it strategy. It's a marketing tragedy, but every single one of those that go to my congressman currently is Gosar. I get he he doesn't he doesn't seem to address the issues. He gives me uh, oh this this comes right off the Monsanto page about how genetic in response to a petition about labeling genetically. Um, and in, in actuality, it may not even, he may not even know anything about it. Probably not. This is just, it's a marketing strategy where they already have answers pre-made, 
and right. it's already out there. And with that's what it is. They're just all bringing people letters, in. But they're mm -hmm. irritating. But we. But your point is really well taken. Because that, if you, like when Bernie Sanders runs um, a survey, uh -huh. you see him in Congress going, well, you know, seventy-two thousand people said. And, well, 9,000 said this. So, obviously, the people want this done. Why are you voting against it? Right. I don't think that a thing like Pop Fox should be out there with only one side right. answering it. We have to let the rest of the people know so that we can get our side to make themselves heard. Yeah. Yeah, they're creating their own statistics. Yeah, they are. And yep. we're letting them do it, though, yep, by yep. not <coughs> voting in those. We're letting them do that. You guys right. know what they say. 50% of all statistics are made up. I, I would like to ask you guys, uh, I asked, offered this table with all these different pens and such on it. Because when I, I talk, here you talk about making sure the message gets out. I'm saying individual campaigns. There's dozens of pins here on the table that have been donated to my campaign to spread these messages around, to make sure that, that everybody is getting the message into somebody else's face. Your campaign may be as little as wearing a Pepsi <coughs> is. Certainly, I have one near and dear to my heart. Or, or narrow. Or like our uh, esteemed former county chair, Ed Brzezinski, protecting the postal service. The message needs to go out. This is the way that we can do it. And these are free. I, of course I want you to donate to my campaign. I want you to donate thousands or hundreds of thousands. Either one. <laughs> but uh, mostly this whole campaign is about getting this message out. So I hope that you'll look at the table, figure something that you can believe in, a message that you will carry, and carry one of these pins away. At least one. We'll get more. I have a question, Joe. Yes, sir, John. I've been on social media a lot lately uh, because I had to sit at home. And one of the disturbing things that I have seen on there is this kind of separatist movement between liberals where they're saying, well, we don't like any party. We don't really want, uh, well, let's do something different. We want the coffee party. We want this. We want that. Uh, kind of a libertarianism, but it's from the left. How in the world can we counter that, Joe? Well, uh, the only way that we can counter something like that is making sure that we get our message out. And the only way that we can do it is uh, join the game. And uh, exactly. that is what we have to do. Uh, we are working uh, right now to get our website developed um, uh, in, in Kingman. And on that website, they're going to focus primarily on, uh, on how to get our messaging up on top. If you do a, research, a search uh, uh, of Democrats, uh, we want to do everything that's necessary uh, to get ours at the top of the list. So they're going to click on our site. Yeah. And, um, well, they uh, want everything that we want. Yes. It's just that they're trying a different approach to it. Well, you know, I, I, all I can ask is for everybody here who has not gone to uh, my Facebook page, Longoria for AZ House, go there, like the page, listen to what we're listen to what we're doing, to the work that we are trying to do, and get our message out. Uh, we can't. I, I am not going to stand up here and say that we need to restrict. Uh, the voice of, of, of whoever wants to get out there and have a voice. That's the American way. However, a lot of those voices, yeah. like this Vox uh, that you were talking about, maybe this other website, that they, they have an important thing to say, and they're activists and they're going to say it. But yet they're just appealing uh, to a small minority uh, of people. Uh, uh, there, we always on the left we're going to have uh, an extreme, and on the right we're going to have an extreme. But uh, we're always going to have that. We have always had that. It's just now that there are more uh, media markets for them to be able to get their word out. Uh, so uh, to answer your question, the best thing we can do is to get, it, get active, get involved in that media. Uh, we have to reach uh, this rising American electric that the Arizona Democratic Party is telling us. The, the single women vote, uh, the Latino vote, um, and the, the young vote. Those are the three uh, areas that we have to uh, reach 
And nowadays, how do you reach them? Basically from social media. So we have to just do our due diligence and, and enter that and be the louder voice. And uh, unfortunately, what has happened is uh, sometimes the minority has the louder voice. So they get heard and it becomes, it seems like they are the popular, uh, uh, their populist movement. Uh, so, so the onus is on us uh, is, to, is to get out of the work. Well, I'm all in, Joe. Well, thank you. All in. All in. All in. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay, I think that uh, if I'm going to try to put on my chair hat, uh, I do need to, to uh, uh, remind you that the, what you can do, uh, that we are here, we're going to enjoy, uh, enjoy some fine food that, uh, that uh, Hillary and Joel put together for us. And uh, we just need to ask you uh, that there are some things that you can do today. If you have not signed our petition, that's the first thing to do. And I thank all of you who have. And uh, the second thing you can do is uh, donate to our campaigns. Now, Michael Weiser is, is running for Congress. Uh, uh, he just needs a ton of money. You know what he's up against. Uh, so anything that you can do to help him, um, uh, he greatly appreciate it. Uh, Beth and I are running a clean election. Um, and, and what we do with clean elections is uh, we're basically saying we're not going to be taking any money from businesses, uh, from corporations, uh, from super PACs. Uh, we're going to raise our money from the citizens of Arizona. And we need uh, uh, just a little bit under $300, uh, $5 bills from, uh, from individuals so that we can qualify for that state money. And that state money is not raised, it's not raised from taxes. It's raised from uh, civil fines, criminal fines, uh, traffic fines. Um, and then also you can check a little box when you do your state taxes uh, to donate. So uh, that's what we're shooting for. That's what we would like. And before Beth and I do qualify, we are allowed to raise uh, a little bit of seed money um, uh, so that we can buy all the goodies that we have here uh, prior to receiving our uh, state money. So we would appreciate if uh, there's anything that you can do to help us out that way. Uh, uh, we can, can, can raise up to $160 from an individual. Uh, so if, if that's within your uh, power to do so, we would appre appreciate uh, that as well. So um, thank you all for coming again. And uh, I appreciate every one of you. And you have all been the backbone of this uh, of the committee, and uh, uh, I thank you very much for that.